Hey guys, welcome back to Parkitect. This is going to be episode 2 of my campaign playthrough. So in the last episode we got to build in Maple Meadows. That was actually a very fun, enjoyable map, especially to get your feet wet in this game because it's very easy goals. And my medieval village was quite enjoyable. I liked all the little details that I've added into it. But today we're going to jump on to the, to the second campaign, is Chanute Airfield. So the description reads, a small airfield has been abandoned and now it now it its laid has become available uh, oh sorry, I'm reading this wrong. Now its land has become available for use. This looks like an ideal spot for an amusement park. If you can work if you can work with the limited space. Okay. The old airport structures are landmarks and and need to be preserved. Oh, so they can't be deleted. So literally on the second map of this campaign, the buildings cannot be deleted. Interesting. I didn't realize those that existed. Okay. Um, goals are at least have 250 guests in the park. Optional sell at least 400 tickets. Okay. And complete by year two of June. Alrighty then. That seems pretty simple. Let's go jump into the map and see what it's all about. Okay, first thing to do is the pods. All right, here's the uh, the regular. Well, this is the window. Every time you pop up into a scenario, um, but so it's saying that this is not deletable. Is that right? Oh, ah, okay. I didn't realize, but I can grab from it. I mean, honestly, I can grab from it. So where? Do, so the guests spawn here. They walk down here, walk around the parking lot, into the airport. And this airport looks pretty snazzy. I like the little airplane on top. This looks pretty nice. And then some of the other things, like this is the terminal with the air traffic controller. And then we have a hangar over here. So I do have a problem with this hangar. Oh, I just noticed something on the uh, the picture on the, the map. There was a difference here. Oh, I noticed. Okay, so they they changed it in the the preview. That's interesting. Dude, that's okay. So <clears throat> they add a window so you can see that this is the depot. Because honestly, this this cover is really noticeable. Like, okay, where's the depot? Where can I find it? Can't find it. But okay, regardless, uh, sidetrack. Um, let's see here. We have the runway and then the main runway and then the this taxiway I'm assuming I really don't know how airport airports work really oh there's so there's land to buy there's a more land over here to buy yeah there's more land to buy over here okay that makes sense um, I do like that so this is where the main hangar sits can I not delete the hangar I can't delete the hangar but I want to make a new type of hangar maybe over here but let's go look at what I get in the first beginning. So let's see what rides we get. We get the car ride. That would be cool to build, like a little tour of a facility. Or maybe a baggage claim ride. I don't know. Uh, Ferris wheel, plane carousel, which is very appropriate for this. Thrill rides. We have Gravitron again and Wipeout again. And Twister, as usual. But we get a jumper this time in the beginning. Okay. Jumpers are cool. It's, it has a tornado on top, so it's kind of weather related, kind of like planes. Okay. Uh, but we do get a junior coaster, and we still have these. No, 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 no. Yes. So, junior coaster for the first time, mini coaster from the last map, and then we had a, we added a wild mouse. These two are great for small spaces, especially like, like this. It's so funny that the second scenario is very space restrictive versus the first scenario. We go from wide and open to narrow and long. That's crazy. Uh, nothing for transport rides, because honestly there's really no... I mean, you can do a transport, but not the best. And then a log flume. Oh, there's a log flume in here. That would be nice. Okay, let's take a look at scenery, because I always need to double check what I got in the toy box. So we got our normal effects stuff. Nature seems to be... Oh, we have some fantasy involved. Okay. Vines could be used for something. I would use those for cables, maybe. Eh, we'll see. Um, nothing new in here. It's just normal plants. Rocks are our typical. Uh, trees are normal. That's fine. 
fountains. So we got some sci-fi stuff though, right off the bat. Interesting. Some fantasy still, and then sci-fi here because there's antenna. I mean, this is a little too much antennas. I don't know who built this map. I'm guessing it was Josh, not Sil. I'm not sure. I need to go ask maybe the de developers again. I would just ask. Uh, crates. Okay, this is normal for small. Vehicles are normal. Water. Yeah, normal. So we have a lot of sci-fi stuff to our disposal, especially all this stuff. But I don't want to make this place sci-fi. I want to match this theming. Like, I want to make a bigger type of hangar somewhere. Maybe reroute. Oh, you know what? Well, we can buy this land and make a hangar here. I didn't think about that. Buy land and build a hangar. Same thing over here. Now, like, now yeah, like the first ride should be over here. Like, in a hangar. Okay, I'm just uh, blue skying right now. So we got our cables. These cables are so much fun to use sometimes. I like using these, but it's okay. Um, let's see here. Just normal sci-fi, normal stuff. So in the sci-fi, we have that other wall piece right now. Wait, we have mechanical steamworks. Wait, why do we have steamworks? Is it the walls? Ah, it's the brick walls. See, we have the steamworks walls, but not the steamworks props. Good. I like brick walls. These are great for like industrial buildings, so that's great. I just noticed we have crates here that I deleted. Oopsies. We have crates here, but we can't use them because they're in Western. Darn it. Well, okay. <laughs> but we don't really don't have a lot of stuff, actually. It's like it's like Maple Meadows. We have generic stuff, but we do have available as the science stuff that I normally would have never played with before. And then the shapes are all new to us as well because they were added in the Boom the Blooms. But I have all these options now to kind of do things in and no employees, of course. Um, I do need a curious about land purchases. 15 per tile. Okay, that's not bad. Usually when I make a scenario, I make them very expensive because I'm evil. But hey, it happens. But yeah, look, more crates and caution cones that's cool already then well done rambling at this point just kind of look oh i didn't look at the here either oh wow they gave them a lot of shops this round oh boy um balloons burgers cash machine oh that's important toilets typical oh look at a shirt stall that's from um a taste of adventure yeah that's cool that's something new that that wasn't in this map before now it is shirt stall okay i'm down make it make a little gift shop here that'd be cool and then customize shop that's always a great thing to have especially for like outdoor vending who knows but i'm gonna let you guys here and uh we'll get into the actual time lapse let's go okay let's get on to building the park for chanute airfield so the first things first is to test out a theory I had and like path covering because I wanted to do some curvature paths for this map to kind of just test out the range of vanilla again. So I found a way to use cubes at I think point, uh, don't get me wrong, I think it's point 13 or 12. And I was just testing out a corner to see if I can do curvature stuff without using plants because plants would be the way to cover it. But this worked out pretty well. I'm going to use it in some other sections of the park. It was just a test here in the beginning. Again, the first section of the park is going to be a lot of deleting and placing because I don't know what I want. I'm sometimes indecisive on what goes on in the park's things, details, paths, scenery, stuff like that. But I knew I wanted the plane carousel in the front, though. And I wanted to extend the terminal building to make it more part of the ride or a cover for the queue because I can't delete that terminal. I can't even use the the inside. I know there's one section I can use for inside like a row where I put the restrooms and the info booth is in like the blue part building where the airplane statue is. But in this case, I just couldn't use anything else. But I did add some more details to it like some better windows, some disdaining on the roof to kind of make it more old 
more used, you want to say. And I like that I extended and added more details to that build. I'm probably going to do that in the future maps. If there's more things on the map to play with, I'll probably do that just to kind of give it some astro flair. But I like to, I think that's pretty fun to do. Um, the next thing I was going to work on is a restaurant for the area. And it felt very fitting to fit it basically in the front of the park. So it's here's the plaza. And here's the restaurant next to the depot area that's in the hangar, and it just felt appropriate to have it all here. And if, this is just the closest to the depot, honestly. I didn't want to make a lot of backstage, because there's really no point to making the restaurant, let's say, on the other side of the park border or something. It didn't really make any sense to. So it's just easier to have it near the depot. The, the haulers don't have to walk too far, and then they deliver what they need. Um, I also wanted to build a quick little outdoor seating area for the restaurant to make it more like a theme park. And I'm trying to keep in mind that this is like a like a family-run theme park. So it's let's say they bought the the airport recently, and then this is all they had was to build a couple buildings, maybe a couple flat rides, and two coasters, and then that's what they have. It's a little theme park dedicated to an old airfield. And there you go, Shinu Airfield theme park, basically. Um, the hangar building is basically modeled after some of the stuff that I've done before in like American Adventure and other airplane hangar type things I've done in the past. And I wanted to call this restaurant Taste Pilot's Grill after the one from California Adventure that actually no longer exists. It has now changed to, um, I think it's called Smoke Jumper's Grill. So this is kind of an homage to it. I wanted to just pull a name that I didn't have to redo. Uh, the cool little detail I liked on this hangar was these hangar doors out of windows. It's the giant window piece flipped around on grid 8. I just stacked them all up on top of each other and then just pushed them in inward. And I really like this effect. It really looks like hangar doors. It's just kind of believable. So I really did enjoy that. Uh, making the sign was actually pretty easy. It's just kind of like a wing metal type of thing. Just looks like wings. And then it says Taste Pilot's Grill on it. Very basic. I want to plan on doing more of these type of signs in all of my parks when it is appropriate. I want to say, yeah, yeah, when it's appropriate, when it looks good on a building or a ride. I'm not going to do it for every ride because I think it will be a little tacky in some places. I want to try to keep this as clean. And sometimes basic is okay. And I think basic is a somewhat okay thing to do for design. And like most of this... I want to say this park was very basic in design, but it, yet it was clean and it just was very cohesive in all of its places, and I was very happy with the outcome of this map especially. Um, let's see here. Let's, the next thing would be to build the Junior Coaster. That's the first coaster I get to build. And this just could be like a, just a normal, nothing special. It's just going to be helixes, in and out, kind of interact with the flat ride over there, the jumper, and then just kind of find its way back to the station. Just a very generic junior coaster. Now I'm not sure which junior coaster this one's modeled after. I'm, I'm gonna guess this is a Vacoma, but I might be wrong. I have no idea if there's any other like junior coasters out there, but that's, there it is. Uh, there's no station cover right now, because I'm gonna talk about that in the break because we're going to sh just see how the park's running at this moment because I just opened it looks like it yeah the park's just about to open I wanted to get some funds in there because I only have about what nine thousand yeah nine thousand dollars it's not a lot that's not even enough for like maybe a couple flat rides but that's it but I wanted to build another coaster but some coasters were not available to me yet so we'll meet you over in the park overview Okay, here we are in the halfway point, of, or just break one of Shinya Airfield. So I'm just going to show you what the park looks like at this moment. I just opened the park about maybe like five minutes ago. I'm trying to see the guest flow, how it's going. Um, we just finished building this junior coaster. I like where it sits. I like the interaction it has with the this ride back here. Um, the next plan is to cover it build some type of structure that kind of resembles either this or something of that nature and then I want to build a transfer track station back here so we're gonna make this the transfer track I might have to move this block break actually up here so we can make a slide track I don't want to purchase another roller coaster just to make it look like a transfer track so I'm gonna move this block 
up, or yeah, I'm gonna make this four tiles long. Yeah, it's gonna be four tiles long. Make a fake transfer track and then a shed, and then this building. So this can be backstage of some sort, even though it doesn't really. Yeah, it can be, back, be backstage. Um, the thing I like so far is my taste pilot's grill. I really like this building a lot. I really like how I did the doors with the windows. I know that guests are gonna walk through them, but I don't care. Actually, no, I do care. So we're just gonna add um, curbs. Let's just do this just to make our lives look. There we go. That looks different. It's using it. Yeah, we'll just do that. I want to make these. Oops, wrong color. And there you go. We have now. So now they won't go through. But it doesn't look as flush. So maybe not. No, I don't. I like this to be unified. So we're gonna keep it open. But there's Taste Pies Grill. Here was the first ride I added. It was a. Uh, um, a plain carousel. I'm actually gonna make this do this so I can make these kind of match in unison. Um, I extended the terminal building kind of a little bit, just add a little bit of depth. Added my own windows, fixing some of the things like that. Like this window needs to be fixed up here actually. Just adding a little bit of astro flare to it, if you want to call it that, sure. Um, but at this point, I think I'm researching a powered coaster. Oh, lame. I, th I was hoping for a wooden. I was so hoping for a wooden. Oh. Okay, let's see. What else do I need to double check? So I know the junior coaster is sitting at 10 bucks. This is hitting at 250. I think this I can push to seven. Uh, we have a burger stand and a drink stand in here, and then I stuck a information and a bathroom inside this building just because it made sense to kind of utilize this building to my advantage. The shame is that it takes up a lot of space, actually, this this building, but it's okay. So the thing, plan is to build this cover and then expand the park in this direction. Either we either build a Ferris wheel or we build another flat ride of a thrill ride or maybe make a wild mouse maybe in this corner or we can expand and build over here not really sure what I could build next but it's looking good so far and I'm glad where this is going I only have 90 guests and I haven't really broken even just yet because we just got here so let's just continue on to the next phase of this wonderful little park Okay, let's get on to the next couple of things to work on in Chinook Airfield. Uh, the first thing I wanted to work on for the Junior Coasters decoration, you want to call it that, is to build a proper catwalk out of hangar roofs. I was using this technique before a long time ago, so it was just fitting to use these again as catwalks to make this as realistic as possible, especially with how limited the vanilla assets are but this looks pretty nice and I used cable pieces as railing I wish I can color the cable pieces that would be wonderful but they are a gray color which is fine that kind of works for a railing of some sort and on to making the transfer track and the station for it so the station's kind of a, a mixed bag it's like a um, I don't know how I explain it's like a warehouse plus a brick office building in a way. It's kind of a mix of things. I just was at this point experimenting on shapes and sizes of buildings because I didn't want to make one giant rectangle and I feel like that would be all, I don't know, strange or just boring to look at. I think it's that my problem is I want something that look, looks interesting from the sky, especially because you're in this view all the time. So I felt that it was more fitting to make it like, so I have a contrast between brick building and concrete building with a metal roof that's pitched and then a flat roof and I kind of think this worked out pretty well. It kind of just makes it look different, it makes it interesting and since the coaster goes through the station basically to do the turnaround before going back to the station I think it felt appropriate to kind of make that kind of work. And the, the storage house for the coaster is that building as well because that's where the transfer track is in the back. So this worked out pretty well in this aspect. Nothing too detail oriented, like, not like my last map. My last map in Maple Meadows, I was going cam with those roofs. And in this round, I just didn't want it to go too crazy. And since it was a very generic type of theming for the aer airport, it didn't really, was fitting to go heavily detail on stuff. 
and I'm learning at this point going simple sometimes is pretty good and pretty nice to do. So I'm just figuring out what needs to be put in, filling in the spaces with trees and bushes, figure out some fence lines, make sure that guests don't walk into a coaster line and get hit, that would be a lawsuit on my hands, and things like that. So it was uh, pretty fun to do, and I did this um, interesting, well it's not interesting, it's just a capping off the roof with uh, square pieces. That worked out too. I like, I love using the shapes, the shapes are just so wonderful right now. Um, I mentioned this earlier in the last time lapse that I was going to do some more better path covers and I did that one little green corner right there because I didn't want to put bushes up against the, the building and it felt right. And then I wanted to test out some different type of vents with the cable pieces and it's like cable bracket that is in the sci-fi set. So I was surprised that the sci-fi set was available for this scenario. I was, just, I was completely blown away that that was available, which is nice. I'm waiting until one of the scenarios lets me have Taste of Adventure or Candyland or something. Like, if I have the Adventure Pack or the Candy Pack, I want to know which one gives it to me. Because I could probably research it and get the things, but maybe not in this round. So, it's okay. Um, this back area, this back play path near the coaster is actually just useless. So, it's just a decorational and on to the second coaster, um, I researched the wooden coaster. I didn't want to build a wild mouse. I really don't like building them. They're not enjoyable to me. They, I feel like they do the same thing over and over again. You go back and forth, back and forth, and then voila, there's a, I don't know, wild mouse. I, so I felt like a wooden coaster was fitting, and this one was just going to be themed to, well, the name of the coaster is, I think, called um, Ace Pilot. It's a very generic name for a wooden coaster and something that's themed to airplanes or airports whatever and it's just an out and back I think typical wooden coaster some helixes some not and then I also want to make sure there was room for a transfer track and a maintenance shed so again I'm trying to keep all the realistic features in place as possible without really going over budget but again I took out a loan for this round for the second round so it worked out pretty well. I can't wait until I get to a scenario that requires me to pay back the loan, because that will be interesting. Because at this point, both maps at this point are pretty easy to beat. So I forgot how easy they were. But that's not necessarily a bad thing either, because it's this game is supposed to slowly get you into the game as you venture through the maps, they get harder and harder. So Chinook Airfield is a good up point because it goes from I think 200 guests to 250 in this round and then it's just steadily goes up higher and higher um, so at this point the wooden coaster needed to be decorated for a station cover so I went for a metal arch roof type of design and a very rectangular and I think this worked out pretty well. I like the look, and I like that I used some of the supports off-grid. I used them on to another grid. It makes the roof a little bit more unique instead of being so grid-based. And that's what I think what helps in building on-grid, is you try to make a lot of things off-grid even though it's on-grid. It's kind of like an optical illusion. And it helps kind of make the park look more organic. You make it a little bit more... Well, not make it less grid based looking, but it's not always a bad thing to also stay grid based either, unless that's like the look you look you're going for. Like if you're making a grid based arena and it's supposed to look like some type of pixel art, then yeah, you want to go grid. You have to. It's grid art. It's like yeah, grid art. So pixel art, as I say. So at this point, I'm just just doing random decorations and detailing to the coaster with supports, just adding some little bit more realism. And then at this point I'm just filling in trees and places and bushes just to kind of help out with the park's like flow and making sure the lamps and benches and trash cans are put down because I know that if I skip those guests get angry and then they leave and I don't want that. I want the guests to stay as long as they can, spend all their money and then, then they can leave. Or they can go back to the ATM and get more money and pay me some more. That'd be great. Uh, this is a cool way to utilize the fake maintenance buildings that I'm going to be building for the rest of this campaign is to throw in some actual 
staff buildings. It's a bet. This is the best way to hide them, in my opinion. You can also hide them underneath coaster stations. You can try that too. So this is a way to just hide it in plain sight, and it makes that building somewhat useful. Now there's a break room underneath a maintenance shed, so that worked out pretty well. Um, I also just placed down a Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel, I felt like it was a perfect spot for it. And it's just a generic Ferris wheel, nothing too special. Again, in th this map right now, like this whole build, every ride was kind of just placed down to fill in space and then kind of incorporate into the landscape and the pathways. And that actually worked out really well. I like that there's only a few buildings in this area and a few no, it's not like too much. It's again, it's an airfield. It's not supposed to be that that crazy about it. And you just watched me just win the map, so I just got the 250 guests. I'm waiting for the 400 ticket bounce or the 400 ticket goal, and that's gonna happen. So that's not hard either. You just kind of let that happen. Here, I wanted an additional shop out here to get guests moving out here. So this is a um, donut shop, and then at the end of the uh, Avenue is a twister just to kind of cap it off in total I think we have one two three four five six attractions six attractions in total I think I think we, no I think we have seven I don't quite well let's count so we have two coasters and we have a plane carousel a gravitron a jumper a ferris wheel and a twister. So yeah, seven seven attractions in total in this park. So it's a small baby park. So again, it's a family run and it's not supposed to be that crazy. So I'm going to leave you guys here. We're going to go over to see how the park's doing it at the moment. Okay, here we are in Chanute Airfield with the finished park. So I like how this park actually turned out. I'm actually more surprised than I thought when I first got into basically decorating any of these campaign levels. So let's just do a short tour. So here's the front entrance area. I explained this in the break section. So here's the Taste Pilot's Grill, our main restaurant of this park. I tried to focus on making sure the park was kind of meant to be, I don't know, more family run. It's a small little park. They just purchased the airfield for maybe dirt cheap, and then this is the park as it's built. Um, here's our first coaster of the whole park. This is called, I called it First Flight. It made sense to be called First Flight because it's airplane themed. It's just a very, I do you want to call it, a very generic um, junior coaster. Very maybe Vacoma like, maybe, because it kind of looks like a Vacoma. Maybe, who knows. Uh, this is the station. It's kind of like an office building slash hangar slash warehouse. Kind of a mixture of two things. I wanted to kind of cut up the building instead of making one flat roof. And so I added this brick structure with these air conditioning vents and other greeblies. And then some actual backstage area with a little warehouse, a truck, and then the transfer track slides over into the warehouse in the back. And then as we continuing down, because this is the bigger stuff that I added. The second coaster was added after that. This is um, Ace, Pi uh, Ace Pilot. Kind of fitting to be the biggest coaster here and called Ace Pilot as well. It is an Ace. This is a pretty well-rounded coaster. I'm, I'm okay with the layout, especially with how the park sits and how long it is. And I kind of like that this area back here is not touched. And so maybe some of the runways kind of been kept clean and kept okay and so this has kind of worked out here and then the coaster kind of goes from here i like that i made a very different type of layout or not different type of layout um a different type of type station but here's the stats for this coaster it's a very high medium low high decoration well everything here is high decoration because of how many trees and bushes i put down but here's the station a very simple hangar like structure just goes flat over i do appreciate the look of it even though I used as little pieces as possible, it still brings out a character to it. It's surprising because you don't have to put so many pieces into a structure to make it super detailed. You just use the bare minimum, make it simple. It does work out really well, and I do like this structure. I'm going to probably use this more often, being just roof and then a couple pillars, and then you're done. I, I think it looks really nice. 
Um, the transfer track for this coaster sits over here in plain view, but kind of decorated like a warehouse. And then I stuck a um, staff room in there for the employees who get really far into here. Yeah, like those guys. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Shoot. Oh, okay. Uh, and then the last addition was adding a shop back here. This is kind of just another warehouse type of building. I looked at a lot of different terminal buildings when I was researching some like airport stuff. And then the last bit was to add this twister to kind of end cap this area. I do need to add some pavilions here because I forgot to do that. Let's add these ones. I don't usually use these as much. But let's add some pavilion shenanigans. Oh, that works better. See, just doing something simple like that does bring in the area, kind of fills it in without really going overly detailed or over, over crazy, but that looked good. So it's just, oh, I want to make this white though, like the, um, yeah, there we go. Ooh, yes, like, it's like, yeah, themed to the roller coaster, the wooden coaster, a, uh, Ace Pilot. So overall, I do like the outcome of this scenario. I did win all the challenges, which is good. This one was actually a little harder to get. I had to do one campaign. I had to do an actual advertisement campaign for the park. And I did have to pull out a low. Yeah, there it is. She did airfield two months ago at 69%. And I did this loan. I need to pay this back, but I, honestly, I don't need to because the scenario is basically done. I do like overall how the park operates and how... I forgot how fun it is to actually operate in regular game mode. Um, let's see here. No, everything else looks fine. I need to change the color of this, actually. Let's change the color of this because I don't like the default colors. Let's just do white and blue. That works for me. That actually looks really nice. And I want to do that same thing with the cover over the... There we go. We can do that just to make it look more interesting. There we go. That actually looks nice. All in all, I really, really, really like this part. Oh, I wanted to put it over here too. Might as well copy this theme over here and then change the color of this a little bit. Let's make it the a white color with maybe a red because it's airplane colors. Or yelp no not no just red is fine. That works for me. Oh except for the blue. I just realized the blue shouldn't exist. Mm, white will do it. That works for me. Ooh, yes. That looks good. Cool. Um, the only thing that I didn't get during the research was a high intensity ride. So I know the guests were complaining about a high intensity ride like somewhere. Where were they complaining? I'm broke. Oh of course you're broke. So I'm taking all your money. Um Oh, we just got the orbiter. Yeah, it looks like everybody seems to be pretty happy. This looks good. So all in all, this looks really nice. Let's go see what it looks like when we um, exit. Here, let me save one more time so I can save those colors. And let's go see what the map does when we pop on down. I think it's going to be um, the, what's it called? I know the trophy. I think it's going to be the terminals from your trophy. So, I think that's what it is. I don't remember. I think it's probably most likely the, the trophy is the... Yeah, it's the uh, terminal. Oh, it's the terminal with two additional airplanes. How cute. Yeah, this, this looks nice. Actually, for how basic it is, it's still a really nice looking building. And adding to it actually helps. I think that's like... what I should... Excuse me. Ooh, this looks nice. Oh, it does split. Oh, we can either jump right into my western, western roundup, or Victoria Lake. This is cool. I like this. This is really nice. So wait, do I get the airplane now because I unlocked the airport? Uh, oh, I hear it. Yes. Aha, I knew it. Okay, so we only get the airplane once we unlock the airport. <laughs> That makes sense, because we need to launch the airplanes from the airport. Okay, that's cool. I like that you can click it and just mess with it. So, at this point, I don't know which way I want to go. So, Victoria Field's kind of like a Victorian-esque map. Or we go Western, which I really, really, really love to do. So, maybe you guys can decide for me? If you like... Yeah, leave a comment in, in the description. Uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Ask... Maybe... Give me your opinion on if I should do Victoria Lake or Western Roundup. 
I really want to do Western Roundup. Because Victoria Lake, I really don't want to touch, because that's going to be a little bit more out of my comfort zone. But that's kind of the point of doing the campaign levels like this, is because it's out of my comfort zone. Um, but yeah, if you guys choose either or, I'm going to pick one. Yeah, I'm going to pick either one, which one gets the most votes. Maybe I'll put a poll up on Reddit in a couple days, or after this video is uploaded. But all in all, that was a fun little map of uh, Shinu Airfield. Uh, I'm going to thank my patrons for the continued support. If you guys want to support me on Patreon, you can. There's a link in the description. And we're going to continue on to this campaign. It's either going to be Victoria Lake or Western Roundup. That's up to you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.